Hey, I'm back again. Uh, I'm going to talk about pie quarters. Uh, last time I talked about the TR109 pie quarter that I'm working on this guy here, but uh, I'm going to have another update on this guy soon. Uh, production continues and it's going pretty nice, but uh, I'm not going to talk about that tonight. Tonight what I'd like to look at is uh, this little guy right here. This is the TR108 pie quarter I built a while back. Uh, it's got a Pi Zero in it and a sense hat uh, sensor bank. Um, so this was the first one I made. I made a video about it about five years back, something like that. And uh, it's a little long in the tooth now. It uh, <laughs> I'm actually a little embarrassed to show it off because uh, you know since I worked on this, I've learned a lot. And uh, I don't know this this thing has uh, quite a few problems. Uh, you can see right away there's a little buck boost converter in there because in the original design. I sourced this screen as a 5 volt screen, but it's actually a 6 volt screen. So I was having all sorts of um, flickering and you know just sketchy operations. So I threw that in there and it seems to have cleared it up. But now I get this weird problem where it'll after a while start to uh, boot loop on me. And I think that has something to do with some sort of internal short in the back plane. The whole thing is constructed. Let me take these panels off here. The whole thing is constructed um, using this diamond select tricorder toy. And uh, I've cut away, if you watch the video you can see uh, more of the internal construction, but basically I've cut away parts and, and uh, just sort of crammed it all in there and then it's all sitting on a back plane in the back there. Uh, basically what I'd like to do is take it apart and I've sort of rigged up a potential PCB that I'm going to have printed. This isn't the final. I just want to see what this looks like inside and see if it's actually going to be viable. So uh, why don't I tear this down um, and show you what's inside the TR-108. Uh, you can see that some of the LEDs aren't working. I think only two of these buttons work. Oh, I think I just killed it. Yeah, <laughs> I boot looped it. So there's clearly some sort of power consumption problem or, or basically like it's just drawing too much power and uh, my little, you know, um, 10 watt power supply really isn't able to uh, provide the, uh, the necessary power. So I'll have to figure something out. But so why don't we take this apart? I'll get it on the bench here and I'll show you what actually goes into the uh, construction of this thing. All right, so I got it on the bench here. You can see it's, um, it's got these two sides. So what we just do is pop these off. You can see the wiring You can see the wiring here as it uh, comes up from this portion here. It travels up in through this part, through this little gap, through this little gap, and up into the screen section. The screen section just fits in place. There used to be screws that affixed it uh, to the axle here, but I just took those out. Um, it's all held in there with just friction, you can sort of slide it out of the bay and there you go. All right, so basically the entire pie quarter circuit board sort of sits on this back plane panel here. This entire back panel on the back of the tricorder is what everything fixes to. I'll show you what I mean. It's actually kind of handy. Oh shoot, where are my screwdrivers? All right found my screwdrivers. Okay, so it's just these three screws on the bottom here. Uh, there's a piece of epoxy sculpt coming off. Basically the, the whole interior is put together with epoxy sculpt. That looks like a different screw. So when we get in here, you'll see what I mean. Um, I went a little crazy with it. I didn't have a 3D printer at the time, so this was the only way I could get these items onto it. 
It's a bit of a bird's nest in there because, uh, I mean, it's, well, you'll see what I mean. There's no printed circuit board in this thing. It's just perf board. Prototyping board and, uh, you know, uh, lead wire uh, interconnects and all sorts of weird things going on here. I'll show you what I mean in a second. All right, so we've got those uh, six, I think, screws off. So now we should be able to just pop this top section off. And there you go. That's the general layout of it. I got a better shot here. All right, now that I got it all splayed open here, I can go sort of down the list here and tell you what's going on. Here's your sense hat. This is where all the sensors live and the buttons that you don't have access to when it's in the tricorder and, and all that stuff. This here is the brains of the operation. It's your Pi Zero and the uh, card with Pi Quarter OS on it. This here's the little adjustable buck boost converter I got for the screen. Um, I just sort of plugged my multimeter into the V out here and then adjusted this until it was around six volts. Um, it's not precise. Again, this is something I want to change out. I don't want to continue using this screen if I can help it. It's a really good screen. It fits, but you know, it's not perfect and it comes with this whole big driver board on the back of it and stuff. So maybe we'll get into that too. We'll get closer to the screen. But anyways, this is more of a teardown right now than an actual sort of a, you know, vivisection. Um, you can see my power system here. It was just an Adafruit you know, 5 volt uh, 18650 uh, power cell. And uh, you can see I've just sort of crammed it all in here with these custom epoxy sculpt mounts. Oh lordy, what were they doing? Alright, well, let's take a look at what we got here. Let's see if we can wiggle this out. I mean, basically, this is probably where most of the problem is coming from. Alright, so there's my 18650 and my power system here. And you can see it's got a cable plugged into it for the micro USB charging with these gray and brown leads, which connects to there's a switch up here. You can see there's a you know a dip switch that I've actually ripped out of there. It's not in there anymore. There used to be a dip switch, I guess, that lived up right up here, and you could select battery power, uh, mains power, uh, charge battery. Uh, but you know the dip switch eventually became faulty, and I had to take it out. So that's something I'd like to do going forward with the Pi quarters. Have some sort of dedicated you know power switch, and then. The switching, well, here's what I'm going to do. So for powering this thing, um, one of the things I'm targeting for the other Pi quarter is uh, using one of these things. It's called a tiny UPS. It's a little, uh, you know, uninterrupted power supply where uh, you can plug in a battery, right? And you can actually charge it through, um, I think it's this USB charger, and then provide power out through these. And then you also have some you have some ways of uh, integrating with the UPS. You have a GPIO pin that tells you when the battery's low. Um, I'm not sure what UPS out does, to be honest. Oh, that must just be power out, like uh, like the USB here. So five volts out, GPIO that tells you when battery's low. And then, um, you know, I I've been using this on the TR109 just for testing, and it works really, really great. The only problem was I was having a hard time finding any because it looks like the uh, the folks that make it uh, I believe their name is Alchemy Power. Yeah, Alchemy Power. Uh, it seemed it stopped making it. So I reached out to them and uh, asked them if they had any plans to continue uh, manufacturing this, and they said they did. Uh, they're just working on a new model, and they were nice enough to send me a uh, sort of pre-production prototype of it, uh, which I haven't really had a chance to play around with. But it looks like uh, it's got a much more sophisticated power control system. You can see that nice... Uh, what is that, a quad flat pack? QFP or whatever, QFPN, I don't know. Uh, basically better than this one over here. It's got way more leads, so you know, it's gotta be better. And, uh, well, it's purple. Well, I guess they went with Osh Park for their pre-production prototype. Um, 
I don't know. I'm excited to try this. Uh, looks like some, you know, some component changes, but also just some architecture changes here too. So uh, it, it should be interesting to see uh, wh how this one, you know, stacks up. That's definitely what's going to be powering this thing going forward though. I'm getting rid of this. I'm not doing this weird quasi power blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get an actual UPS board like this. There's other ones. I think there's like one from Adafruit. Um, but this is what I'm going to go with probably for the Pi quarter, just because it's really compact. And uh, hopefully, if this makes it to production, they'll be easy to get. Um, I guess I should have a backup just in case, uh, you know, with chip shortages and something, if they're not able to produce it in the numbers they want. Anyways, uh, I think these are cool. You should, give them a, you should give them a look. Alchemy Power has some cool stuff. Check them out. All right, so I'm gonna start taking these things off so we can start getting to the main board and seeing, uh, see, you know, taking a look at my crimes here. That's the uh, that's the sense hat. If you've never seen one, pretty nice little uh, little board to play around with. Got a collection of sensors here, all sorts of good stuff going on. You know, uh, like uh, five position um, joystick here with a you know like four positions and a and a button. And uh, this nice 8x8, eight eight, um, I think it's NeoPixel or WS whatever um, LED array. Makes some pretty colors, makes some pretty pictures, have it show what's happening here. Um, they use them for a whole bunch of stuff with the uh, Astro, what used to be called AstroPi project. Um, that's what made me you know, grab one of these. As I said in the video before, it, like these things actually were in experiments that were flown on the ISS. So it's pretty cool. It's got some nerd cred. It's pretty legit. Um, and this will continue to be, I think, the TR-108's sensor board going forward. But, you know, the point of the Pi Quarter is to let you use any sensor you want, kind of. So, I mean, that's that's just a suggestion. Um, I think going forward, the board will also have just sort of like general sensor attachment, you know, zones like uh, I2C or yeah, I2C and uh, SPY and, and maybe some other stuff if it comes up. Here's our Pi Zero. So because the screen at the top of the Pi Zero uses composite, you can see I got this lead attached here. This is actually, uh, if you look down here, you can see right here it says TV and that's because the uh, Pi Zero actually has composite video out. And you don't really have to do any like secret magic to make it work. It just sort of does it on its own, which is great. Uh, I did have some problems with Pi Quarter OS and Python 3 because of just like weird version problems uh, with SDL, but I got it working. So that's good. That's going to stay the same. I'm going to keep using the Pi Zero and uh, composite video probably, but could also use HDMI. We'll see. We'll see. Um, it's all about getting it, you know, getting that bundle of wires through that hole. As you'll see, it's uh, kind of difficult. Okay, so now we get to the real meat of the issue. Good gravy. Yeah, I mean, you know, it worked, but it's a bit of a dog's breakfast down here. And um, I think we'll just go through and we'll start unplugging things. Because I got pictures of all these pin arrangements, but we need to fix it anyways. Oh my gosh. All right, you can see up here, I've got them wrapped into this little custom. Look at all these pin headers I put here and all the bodge wires. Oh my gosh. So to get this out of here, actually, no, I think I permanently installed this in place. Oh gosh, I'm gonna have to, I guess just thread them through. Yeah, I'll just thread them through. No sense busting everything up. I can at least show you my um, mad, Poxy sculpt skills. I was all about this stuff. I thought this stuff was awesome. I was like, who needs a 3D printer? You got a poxy sculpt. Just mash it all together. Not quite. It's um it's cool stuff, no doubt. Um it's cool to play around with. Uh but jeez please, look at this mess. Alright, so we'll pull this out. Uh. Oof. You can see why I've been, you know, putting off doing this because it's just, I mean, it's a mess. It does work when it's all in the right place, or it did work, at least enough for me to make a video out of it, but uh, 
with all of its boot loop problems and everything and this thing not working at all I think it's time to uh, to do an overhaul yeah so just disconnect these okay so there it is that's my back plane everything sort of connects and interconnects through that you can see I have some current limiting resistors for my LEDs you have the uh, Pi Zero header here, you have the Sensat header up here, and this is just a 90 degree header to e make it easier to connect things. And then you see down here, that's my USB power port. So it's all very slapdash, <laughs> all very thrown together. Um, not nearly as, let's say, space conscious as the TR-109 that I'm designing now. So uh, there's a lot of work that can be done to bring this to the same level of quality. And uh, one of the things I'm doing is I'm going to, I have, this is just a test print, obviously. It's just a paper sort of stand in. I just want to see what this size is and if I can get it to fit um, the same sort of dimensions. And it looks like I can. I can get it right up against that wall and have the same it looks like if I do it this way, I'll have the pie up a little bit higher. But that's okay. So you can see that the the back plane itself is just affixed to the the plastic back panel here with these just these screws here. And these are just screwed into captive nuts being held in place by, of course, epoxy sculpt because, hey, it worked good enough. Yeah, it worked fine for what it was. All right, let's take this guy out here. Yikes. So what I did when I designed this board was I went online. There's a great site where you can get the pin out for basically every Raspberry Pi hat, uh, you know, every major Raspberry Pi hat. And I read the pinout, but then I got nervous. So what I ended up doing was actually going to the schematic for the, the Sense Hat itself and finding every pin that was, you know, exposed to the GPIO port and making sure that on my board they were connected. So I'm not sure if they're necessary. And in any case, I want to use these GPIO. So you can see in my new board, what I'm doing is I take them out and then I break them out into jumpers. So because I might be changing the screen out, I've decided to add support for an ST7735 uh, SPI screen, as well as just the standard, you know, pinout that I was supporting anyways, and uh, a new power sort of header. So basically I'm trying to break everything out to this edge and then also leave sort of open-ended stuff. I'm going to put an I2C connection here and maybe a spy connection here or move it all down and do the opposite. Anyways, just so I can actually, it'll be a general purpose board. It won't be exactly for this application of a PyCorder. It could just be, you know, for any kind of TOS or any kind of large scale tricorder like this, maybe even like a disco tricorder or something if you're so inclined. Um, that's my goal. This this hat will be more general purpose than the Pi Quarter 2 TR109 circuit board, which is only for the shell I've designed for it. This will be sort of more, um, you know, because I've had people asking if I was going to make a board to like sort of reduce soldering, and this is about as close as I'm going to go to that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's all open source. I'll release the Gerbers if you want to make your own and the KiCad file if you want to play around with it. Um, I might even sell some boards too, uh, you know, ready to go if you want to make your own. But uh, this is basically what I'm looking at for the circuit board for this. All right, well, with this sort of taken care of, I'm gonna cut this lead up here. I don't even know what this one's for. I guess it's for the, it must be for uh, DC five volts out from the, the battery or something. Anyways, don't need it anymore. Okay, so I got my 
back plane out here and you can see there will be a substantial size difference. Um, it's still pretty much the same board but uh, with some, some changes to layout and stuff and it'll take up a little bit less space which is nice. Um, probably going to get it printed uh, with a yellow solder mask so that it looks a little bit isolinear or, or duotronic anyways. Um, cool. Let's take a look at the uh, screen now. So now that the screen, now that the wires have all been oh, taken out, I should be able to string these through here so we can see the screen in all its glory. Because if you think the main section was a doozy, <laughs> wait till you see the screen. The screen is some of my finest cludgery. I don't think I've ever cludged as hard as when I built this thing. It's definitely my most complex project up until the, the newest Pi Quarter, for sure. So, you know, you gotta cut me some slack here. See, and these all gotta come through here. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a labyrinth. All right, so this is the display module. On the original toy, there are standoffs that keep this in. I think they're either here or here or here or here or something, but they're plastic standoffs that go all the way to the back and they're actually glued together, which was a real pain um, to take apart because you kind of have to break it. Some people got lucky and theirs were not assembled properly and so there was no glue so they could just pull it apart. But for me, I had to break the standoffs. So what I've done is I, uh, using epoxy sculpt, uh, made a whole front applique to the inside of this, this panel. You'll see it when I open it up. It's wild, man. It's wild. So we'll take this part of in here. And again, it's just captive nuts held into a epoxy sculpt sort of housing. Man, I don't think I've taken this thing apart since I built it. No, that's not true. I've taken it apart a couple times just to try and figure out what's going on, but never quite so in depth. I don't think I've had this screen open in a while. All right. So now my trick to get this part open is to just stick a little screwdriver in there and just sort of press forward. she is. Alright, before I really get into it, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna get these wires out of here. String these through. I remember this being a real pain, trying to get all these wires through here. They seem to be coming out a lot easier than they go in, but you have to do them one at a time because they all, three stooges pile up uh, at the hole here and you can't get them out. So you gotta do them one or two at a time. And just sort of be patient and take your time. I think you you notice I'm also using these. I think they're called Dupont connectors. I'm not doing that next time. Uh, the goal was I wanted it to be you know accessible and and easy to modify and but it just ends up you know you get these really flaky connections. You're never sure if it's the connection or your your design or what. So I'm definitely not doing it that way. You can see here I resorted to actually gluing some connections together because they were coming undone. That down there is just a, a limit switch. You can't really see it, and it uh, you know it turns the screen on when the when it's closed, and it turns all the screen and all the electronics off when it's open. So uh, what I did is that's just the common gram for the entire panel. Everything comes back to gram for that, which is probably why I get some problems sometimes. Maybe it's too much current. I don't know. All right, so flip this over now. Oh my gosh. This whole thing's a gigantic mess. Here is, oh man, I could have just taken these out. I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot I tried to make it easier for myself by having uh, extension pieces that would you know, go through the rest of the tricorder and you could just pull it out here. But eventually I just glued that all together. All right, so this back here, this piece here is the driver board for the screen. You can see I taped up the ribbon cable just to be sure, but I'm just going to pop this off while I got this open. 
so that I don't break anything. And you can see I'm just just going right into those those uh, pods there for what is that five? What does this say? Right? It says five to twelve volts there, but on the Antifruit site it says it's six volts. So I don't know who you're gonna believe. I can tell you at five volts I was getting sketchy performance with this thing, so I do think it is a six volt board. Um, anyways, you know it's it's great. It takes a composite signal in. You got these two buttons to adjust um, zoom, you know, like uh, aspect ratio, orientation, brightness. Um, it would be great if it fit perfectly within the confines, but you can see it, it overlaps just a little bit. So it's actually got to sit in here on a slight angle. And that was just, you know, it seemed like the best way to do it. Uh, Cause again, I didn't really have a screen. You can see here my epoxy sculpt frame. <laughs> I was very proud of this. <laughs> Looking at it now, <laughs> oh my God. Yikes. I mean, again, it works and it was perfectly fine. And, and how I actually did this was I wrapped the screen in a very thin layer of um, like cling wrap and um, put the screen down on the panel and then made a frame, a very light frame around the edges of the panel. Then I, when that dried, I put the top pieces on. I did it one piece at a time. And then when that was all done, I actually popped this out. And this whole thing slides out here. And I had a perfect little tray to slot this into. And that was how I did that. Um, you know, maybe maybe not the best way to do it. I mean, the nice thing about epoxy sculpt is it's a pretty strong bond, but uh, it's not strong enough. Like I can just pop all this off now and restart. Start over, which is what I think I might do. I'm an idiot and I didn't keep the electronics board from the toy in here. I decided to rip it out and put my own perf board thing in here. And it's a huge mess. It looks it looks like uh it looks like crap. Look at that. You can see I just stuck that together with epoxy skull. Gosh. <laughs> put the epoxy sculpt down. What are you doing? Maybe it's silly to try and make two of these at one time, the TR-109 and the TR-108, but especially with the new wand company announcement that, that they're making their own, they're making their own, they're making a licensed one, a real one, um, not some backyard garage tricorder. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this one deserves an update. It's a pretty easy project. It's really just a Raspberry Pi case and uh, a sense hat for the sensors. Uh, but it got me started and uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that are interested in the idea of a handheld sensor data acquisition and display plat platform. So uh, maybe somebody will get a kick out of that. Uh, but I'm just starting the renovation of this one. So I thought I'd share a teardown while I had it on the bench here. Now I gotta get it back together. Oh well. Anyways, I hope uh, you enjoyed taking a little peek at my tricorder. I'm going to be doing some uh, updates and revisions to it now that I have the original board to look over. And uh, hopefully you'll be seeing more about this soon. I'm definitely developing it in tandem with uh, the TR-109 over here. Oh, yeah. You know, this thing is definitely the flagship project for me right now. Uh, but I wanted to go back and give some love to the pie quarter that for me started it all and uh, just sort of, you know, let everybody know that has been asking me that there will be a PCB available if you want to build your own soon. Uh, here's a little sneak peek again. And uh, yeah, if you have any ideas or anything you'd like to see in it, uh, let me know, you know, I'm always open to suggestions. I'll put a link below to the Git for this project. I'm, I'm taking it open source now, so if you want to take a look and maybe do your own spin, you know, please take, you know, help yourself. Uh, I don't know if anybody who knows what they're doing would want anything to do with this mess, but it's my mess and I love it. All right. Thanks very much for watching. So long.